Hey, I'm going to show you how to install Ubuntu on VMware Fusion Pro on a Mac. So, um, this could be fun. Anyway, so I'll start over because I started from the beginning. So I have VMware Fusion Pro. I'll put a link to a previous video you can watch that shows you how to do the install of uh, VMware Fusion Pro. And we're going to do File, New, and it's going to come up and say, Hey, what do you want to install? Well, I want to install Ubuntu. So. Before I started this video, I went and downloaded Ubuntu Desktop, and I did the latest version. I, you know, LTS is long-term support. I, you know, I, I will change things up so often. Having long-term support doesn't make sense to me. That would, you know, because I will delete VMs and recreate VMs and do stuff over and over again. So I'll put a link into the in the description that you had to go download Ubuntu. Uh, you specifically want desktop for ARM64 because it's running on a Mac. So let's go. Here we go. All right. Install from ISO image. So I've already downloaded, as I said. And we'll go to downloads and we will drag and drop. So there it goes ARM64 bit. And then we'll say continue. And then it's going to ask us how much memory we want to do. 4 gig is fine for a Linux VM. Why? Because Linux is great at memory management as opposed to Windows, which is not as great as it should be. But Linux is very good at memory management. So we can do 4 gig. If later we decide, oh, we need more, we can add more. But I'm going to go with 4 gig. I don't know how much memory your Mac has. Mine happens to have 32. That's because it's a fairly recent Mac. And also, two CPU cores is probably more than enough for Linux. You could add more if you wanted. If I were running Windows, I might bump it to four cores. If I were running Windows, I might bump it to eight gig of memory because, well, Windows is a hog. Also, you'll notice the hard drive it specs out is 20 gig. When I did the tutorial on Windows 11, it was a 64 gig drive minimum it took in order to do the install. Uh, you will find over time as it does patches and stuff, you'll probably want to have it bump that up to 72 gig or even 120. So, Windows a hog. But Linux, not so much. I love it. So, I'm not even going to make any changes here. I'm literally just going to accept the defaults. But if I wanted to, I could go in here and customize the settings about where it's going to land it, save that. Uh, and then I can go here and choose compatibility encryption. I usually don't do encryption at rest for. Uh, VMs because I usually am using for testing. I'm not doing my day to day. They're not my daily drivers. So, yeah, I could go ahead and change all this stuff out. Uh, let's go look here. Da -da -da, share with my Mac. I'm a little iffy about whether, well, so I definitely want to share networking with my Mac. But anyway, all right. So, go. I'm going to start the VM up. And, yeah, video camera seems to have failed. That's fine that go away so I'm gonna say hey try our install Ubuntu yes I do want to do that remember control command will release your mouse so 20 years of Ubuntu wow Ubuntu's been around 20 years wow that's amazing I've been playing with Linux since slackware wow there's music choppy it'll get better as the VM installs I'll probably could close some things out it's true and but I shouldn't be competing for memory I'll bring up the activity monitor and we'll go look and see what it look like here okay so here's the activity monitor up and running and it populates so I do have Camtasia running to do the recording, the screen recording here, but we'll, we'll cut that part out. But yeah, right now uh, I'm doing fine on memory. Uh, it says I'm using 24 cached. What is it? Let me go ahead and see what my big dog is. Part of it's my recording software. Chrome is eating my lunch there, but it's, that's why, you know, memory. So anyway, English is my primary language. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose next. Uh, I don't necessarily need any accessibility, so I'll skip that for now. Uh, I'm going to use an English keyboard. You can do alternate if you had a different type of keyboard. 
uh, we're gonna say it's a wired connection. Uh, install Ubuntu. Yeah, we could do a try, but it's a VM, so let's do it. Let's install. Interactive installation. I could do automated. I didn't set up a YAML file, but you could have done a YAML file that answered all the questions ahead of time. But we're going to do an interactive installation. Uh, extended an offline friendly selection of office tools and such, just essentials. I'm going to do extended because I like to have uh, either LibreOffice or OpenOffice in there so I can share documents back and forth between OS's. All right. Uh, install third-party graphics and Wi-Fi hardware. Then I'll install support for additional media formats. This will add a little time, but I want a fully evolved version of Ubuntu so I can do anything I want right out of the box, but I haven't done a lot of thought about it. Uh, erase disk, sure. Uh, and I'm just gonna say go, okay? Then it wants a name. What will my name be? I will name, I will make it Tech. Yeah, sure. What's it gonna be? Ah. Tech Ubuntu. All right, how about that? Your name, Tech. Uh, yeah, it's a weak password because I don't care. I'm just doing this, require my password log. Use Active Directory. So if you were in a corporate environment or if you had, you know, uh, access to Azure and you were doing some stuff there, you could potentially connect it up. Uh, New York's good for me, time zone wise. Uh, I didn't turn on disk encryption, you'll notice I didn't. I did tell it to load the codecs and drivers and install. I am curious, on Windows 11 when I did the install, I had an issue where it did not load the network driver. And so when it came up, it's like, oh, I don't have a network driver. So I had to install uh, VMware tools right in the middle of the install in order to get access to the network driver. So I'm curious to know if Ubuntu will have a similar issue. And I'm curious of a way to get around that. Uh, luckily, I think after it's done, I can do the install of the VMware tools, but I may have to go in and hack up my network configuration uh, to see the proper network driver. We'll find out. Now, you'll notice that the, uh, the ISO file, let's go to downloads here, is about 3.53 gig. So here it is, 3.535 gig. So, most of what's going to be needed is already in that ISO file, but we'll see. I do like Audacity. Uh, I don't like the way they've kind of messed up with the license. That Blender, oh, that'll be fun. I had Blender on my Mac. I have uninstalled it because I didn't use it enough to justify its existence. The modern day fighting with storage. And I can expand it out so I can see the magic that's happening. Yeah. So I do like to do this to see if anything kind of fails. I like to show the screen to see if anything fails. You'll see how things pop up in red. You'll see error messages. Uh, let's see, reporter not found a config file. That's not a biggie. So this will take a while. Stay hydrated. Drink coffee. I will, of course, speed this up because it just takes a while. And there is, of course, a server version. So, you know, for commercial use, I would recommend downloading the server version. That way, you are not installing all the junk you absolutely don't need. The more you install, the more things that can be hacked, you know, can be attack vectors for Linux. You want to do a bare minimum install. Let's say, for example, you're going to run a patch here, Nginx. I would skinny down the install dramatically. Skinny down the install so that you don't wind up with a bunch of stuff that has hackability on your server. Batten down the hatches, you know? Now, Ubuntu probably has, like a lot of Linux distributions, already has a set of VMware tools built in. And so, uh, if that's the case, then probably the driver that we need will be loaded automatically by its hardware detection. So. That'll be great. Um, yeah, because that way, when you do updates to Ubuntu, then the kernel, the, uh, not only does the kernel get updated, but also the, you know, the, uh, the VMware tools get updated as well. So, LibreOffice.
Okay, restart now, ready for use. Awesome, restart. Maybe I didn't hit that button quite authoritatively. Restart, here we go, let's see. Hello, anytime now. I'll try one more time. There it goes. I, it could be it was thinking in the background. Please remove installation media and press enter. Right, where's my mouse? Okay, I have to hit control command to get my mouse back. And here, let's see where do I go to. Un okay, it's not connected. Okay, good. Not connected, so it should be good. I can return now. Usually it auto unmounts the ISO, but with the VMware, VMware Fusion Pro, I wasn't sure what it was going to do. So there's me. Welcome to Ubuntu 2410. Next. Don't want to share my data. Uh, I don't like to share data. Sorry. Next. Get started more applications. Open App Center. You know, is there anything I can't live without right now? I don't think so. I think it pretty much has what I want already. Uh. <laughs> okay. Maybe I do want the Bob Ross Proats. I I don't know why. Okay. Okay, it's not necessary. I know, but I don't know why I wouldn't want Bob Ross quotes. But that's it's just that simple. So the thing I use the most is terminal. Um, so usually I'm over here looking for terminal. Uh, <laughs> initial setup is right. Cool. All right. So we're all set, featured, productivity, Chromium. So I'm a big fan of Chromium. So I will go ahead and install Chromium. I know, I know, I'm supposed to run Firefox if I'm running Linux, right? But sometimes you just need Chromium. I've even loaded Edge, please forgive me. It's true. This little bar right here is new. I haven't uh, I haven't done Ubuntu in a couple of releases, so I was like, oh, that's interesting. Oh, apps. This is the most important app to me. Is this one right here? There we go. All right. So now I'm root. Now I can do. All right, that's how you do the install of Ubuntu on VMware Fusion Pro on a Mac. There you go. I hope you enjoy it. Thanks so much for watching. That was a quick tutorial, right? Now I'm going to shut it down. Uh, because when I'm not running it, I don't want it back there taking up and using up my resources on my computer that I'm doing my other stuff with. That's it. That is Ubuntu. I hope you enjoy it.